All right. I, uh, I felt like the Lord gave me some interesting thoughts for today's message. And uh, I'm looking at the 20th chapter of Exodus. Very, very familiar scripture to all of us. But I uh, felt like the Lord directed me to, just to talk to you about the simplicity of God's directions. The simplicity of God's directions. And this, this uh, Bible that I'm reading from gives us everything that we need to know about how to get to heaven. How to make, make a start. How to keep walking in the light. And how to live for Him, and then about what's going to happen in the uh, next world when we leave this world. And so, um, God laid it out so, so simply for us. Here in the uh, book of Exodus, God giving uh, the people and giving Moses instruction for the people, but uh, there by Mount Sinai and and remember that old mountain smoking and shaking and quaking and, and God speaking. And uh, the scripture says that he came down from the mountain. Now, I don't think the people saw him necessarily, but he sure came close enough that they could hear him. And, and he begins to speak to them uh, uh, here in the, uh, uh, in the word that God had spoken to Moses, Moses giving it to the people, I presume. But anyway, uh, first, first verse of chapter 20 says, And God spake all these words, saying... And so uh, I've heard people say, Well, God didn't say this and God didn't say that. But this specifically said, And God spoke all these words, saying... I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And he breaks right out of telling them who he is to tell them very simply what they need to do. And he's going to lay this out, how they're going to how they're going to worship him, how they're going to treat their fellow man. And it's all contained here. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. That's very simple. We, we know these as the Ten Commandments, of course. And, and then some of them he adds to, some he just lets stand alone. But he goes on to say, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or what is in the earth, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. We talked about Cain and Abel. We talked about the fact that Cain slew his brother Abel and, and was guilty before God and, and started off because he had offered an improper offering unto the Lord. God rejected his offering, but he had respect unto Abel's offering. And so... Uh, jealousy sprung up apparently in Cain's heart, and he and he talked with his brother about it, and and uh, probably we, we wouldn't even really want to know what that conversation entailed. But anyway, as a result, he slew his brother out there in the field, covered him up in, with the ground, and thought everything was all covered and hid. But God knew, God knew, and God sees all things, and so He saw that uh, happening held Cain accountable and, uh, and put a curse upon him and held him accountable. But uh, God has been speaking to mankind ever since then in very simple terms, telling him, thou shall or thou shall not. And so what I'm, what I'm trying to point out this morning is the simplicity 
with which God speaks to us so that we don't need to ever be able to say, but I didn't understand. One time when we were on the mission field, I had a fellow, uh, I needed him to convey a message. We didn't have the, uh, the luxury and the pleasure of uh, cell phones and we didn't have a lot of way of communicating uh, to certain people. And so I asked this fellow to convey a message to, to another fellow for me. It was important, it had something to do with the school building or something, I don't remember what, but anyway, uh, uh, now when you see him, will you tell him? And he said, uh, yes, yes, I could do that. And so I told him what I wanted him to tell him. Time went on, uh, a few days later, I realized somewhere communication broke down. This fellow never responded and I don't know what's going on and and project is about to be held up. And, and so uh, another day went by and I saw the fellow that I had spoken to and asked him to convey this message. And, and I said, did you tell that fellow for me? Said, no, Brother Pryor, I, no. I said, but why not? I asked you to tell him, you said that you would. And then I told you what I wanted you to tell him. He said, I didn't understand. I didn't understand. So instead of asking me so they could understand, he just let it go at that and just did not give the message. Well, we can't do that with God and say, sorry, God, I didn't understand. Because God makes it so plain and so simple that uh, even a wayfaring man shall not err in the ways of God. And so he said, uh, we are not to bow down to anything. Uh, here in the fifth verse, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generation. So nobody's going to sin and get by. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And I, I love that aspect. He shows mercy to thousands. He didn't say how many thousands, but we could say, as John the Revelator said, thousands of thousands, thousands of thousands, multitudes, God's mercy. In fact, we could take it a step further than that and say to every individual that ever lived in the entire world, God's message comes through and, he, and his mercy is shown to them. Seventh verse said, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. In the eighth verse, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And uh, we all pretty much knows, know what that entails, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but we, uh, we read here in the ninth verse, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, and it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man's maid, pardon me, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And I think it's very interesting. It seems to me that God spent more time talking about the do's and the don'ts of the Sabbath day than he did several of these other things. So I take it that that is very, very important to God. And so I think we need, if it's very important to God, then I think we need to be very careful uh, about how we treat the Sabbath day. Twelfth verse, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And I think that those were uh, just clear and concise enough that God didn't need to give a lot of dialogue about what uh, that meant or what it didn't mean. He just said, don't do it, thou shalt not. And so he let it go with that. 
17th, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And that's why he did all of this, that ye sin not. Way well, is very plain, very clear, very simple. And so uh, there again, that's, what I want to uh, speak to us just for a few more minutes here. I, I've got a list of things I wrote down, just verses that came to my mind, and so I just jotted them down. I may not have the wording exactly right, but be close enough that you'll, you'll know what, what I meant by it at least. The, the idea that, uh, that came to me is this. Everybody... Uh, will understand God's word enough to know how God how to get saved, how to live for God, how to walk with God and, and what to do, what not to do. And uh, in the in the very beginning, I look back at my own life and my own process and and I'll be honest with you, I dilly dallied around and messed around about getting saved for two or three years and could have been saved all that time and enjoying the blessing of the Lord, but I didn't. I, uh, I half-heartedly sought the Lord and I didn't get anywhere until finally God let me know he had had enough of that. And so uh, he made it very clear to me what I needed to do, and that was to confess my sins and then to repent of my sins, be sorry for them, not just sorry that I got caught, but sorry enough to quit the sin business, to, to live a different kind of life. Of course, that would take grace and all of this, but he has plenty of grace, doesn't he? And I had all the grace that I needed when I got serious about it. And then uh, to believe or to trust God for my salvation, and then after that to obey him, to do his will, do my best to uh, to walk with him and talk with him. Sometime I haven't exactly known what that meant, Sister Dora. I think you mentioned something about uh, doing the will of the Lord this morning. Sometimes I haven't always known exactly about the clarity of that. But what I have found out, if I will honestly ask God, he will always honestly show me what I need to know. Praise the Lord. Um, all right. Uh, Brother August Lelf one time mentioned about the fact that he was trying to know the will of the Lord. And he said, I was going down the road praying. Now, Lord, there's two roads up here and, and uh, I don't know which way to go, which, which church I'm supposed to hold this revival in. So, Lord, I need you to show me. And the Lord said, just go either way and I'll go with you wherever you go. I'll be with you. And he said, well, that was good enough for me. I just picked out the one that I thought was best and God was with me. All right. Um, just some of those verses that I've jotted down. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's in what I read. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. Praise the Lord. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. Yeah, add to that. Fear the Lord. That's a very simple commandment from the Lord in His Word. Fear the Lord. Well, does that mean I have to run and hide every time I hear the thunder or the lightning or uh, every time God uh, speaks, do I run and hide myself? No, 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 no. It's not a slavish fear, but it's a reverential fear. It's it's a fear of awe at the, at the awesome greatness of, of the God that speaks to me and, and that God, uh, the supreme being of the universe, Sister Joyce, would 
would consider coming down, like you said, speaking to you about your mother, going to be in a lot of glory, that God would just care enough to come down and assure us and direct us and direct us, praise the Lord, that uh, we would have reverence for that God. Another one, in the day that you seek me with your whole heart, I will be found. I think it says found of you, but uh, no, I will be found. Walk in the light as he is in the light. And I used to be a little puzzled by that. What's, it, what's he talking about? Walk in the light. Well, God's word is a light into our path, isn't it? Praise the Lord. And, uh, and so we walk in the way that God uh, directs us or shows us that is light to us. Here's one I think is so simple but so necessary. Forsake sin. Forsake sin. I, uh, had a couple of relatives, in fact, that would go out west and hunt rattlesnakes. Sometimes I think it was in Oklahoma, other times it was farther west. And I used to think that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Uh, where I was always afraid a rattlesnake would hunt me. I, I just didn't want to be where they were. And um, anyway, forsake sin, stay away from it, flee from it. Um, this one, love thy neighbor. Pretty simple, isn't it? Love thy neighbor. I've, uh, I've had some neighbors that was a little bit unlovable, and, uh, but love them anyhow. And this same brother-in-law that I mentioned about one time told me, uh, he got a, it was in between the two times I talked about it. I worked for him and the time he, he got saved. But somewhere out there in the middle of all that, uh, he, he got upset with me. And as they would say on the eye on a Grenada, he got vexed with me, you know. Uh, he, he, in fact, he told me one day, don't ever come back to my house. Don't set your foot on my property. I don't care if I never see you. Don't, don't come back. So I told him, I said, well, here's the deal. If my wife sends me to deliver something to your house for your wife, I will come on your property to trouble you or bother you. you no, know, I, won't, I won't bother you. I'll try to, try to be careful. But one morning I woke up and the Lord said, I want you to talk to Willard today. Now what am I going to do? I knew that he was home alone. I knew that he had been sick. And uh, his son had told my son the day before, Dad is so sick, I'm worried about him. So I went to see Willard. Knocked on his door. His back door was always open. They never locked it. I went in through the garage, knocked on his door. He came to the door and said, I heard that you were sick. He said, no, I feel perfectly fine. I said, well, that's not what I heard. I don't care what you heard. That's how I feel. I said, well, uh, could I come in for a little bit and talk to you a little bit? You just do what you want to do. That's what you're going to do anyhow. Okay. So he turned around and started walking for the living room, and I started following him. We walked through the kitchen, through the dining room. He went, goes back to his recliner in the living room, sits down, puts his head back, shuts his eyes. And so I came in and sat down beside him, and I said, well, Willard, I want to talk to you a while this morning. I'm not going to take a lot of your time, and I have something very important that I feel like I need to tell you, and when I've told you that, then I'm going to leave, and I won't be back to bother you ever. And uh, anyway, he, he never indicated that he heard me or cared what I had to say. And so I said this to him, I said, now Willard, I know you've invited me not to come back on your property. You've asked me not to be in your house. And I respect that, it's your house, it's your property. And if you ask me to stay off, then I should stay off, except I felt like God told me to come today to talk to you. And here's the message I feel like that God wanted me to give you. Uh, Willard, 
You don't have to like me. And you don't have to come around me. You don't have to associate with me. But there's a couple of things you can't do and I needed to tell you. You can't stop me from loving you and you can't stop me from praying for you. That's my message. That's what God sent me here to tell you. And I've, I've delivered the message. And so I'm leaving now. I love you. I will be praying for you. He never opened his eyes. He never said a word. I walked back through the house, closed his door and left until that night when he came to tell me I'm trying to get my life straightened up. And I said this to him. I said, Willie, I forgive you. I'm not holding anything against you. But does this mean that I can come back to your house again? Well, I might as well be bold about it, you know. And he said, looked at me in tears streaming down his face. He said, George, you can come back to my house anytime you want to. Uh, you're always welcome at my house. And so I went several more times and always felt well received after that. Amen. Uh, love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. I believe it paid off. Walk in the light. I will be with thee in the sixth trial and shall not forsake thee in the seventh. And you notice how simply God spoke those words. Not big discourses, not paragraph after paragraph of instruction. Just simple little fragments of truth that are so simple for us to understand. Another one comes to my mind. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give thee rest. Amen. Casting all thy care upon him, for he careth for thee. There were several more I didn't write down. But oh, say, I'm so glad uh, that God cares for us. You don't have to be a scholar to understand God's Word. You don't have to be a ph philosopher to know what He's talking about. He made it so simple that the Scripture said, even a wayfaring man shall not err therein. His ways are that simple. Amen. And so I'm challenging us today. Do our best to follow the Lord. Do our best to walk in the light. Do our best to keep His commandments. Do our best to please Him in all of our ways. Praise the Lord. I, uh, I'm not responsible for what I can't do, but I am certainly responsible for what I can do. And so may the Lord help me to be all that He wants me to be as well. Amen. All right, I feel like I've delivered what God gave me for today.